welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint a betta fish or a Siamese fighting fish. With We're going to use watercolors and maybe a little bit of markers. And um, the thing we're not going to do is we're not going to do any drawing at all beforehand. We're going to just jump straight into it with the paint. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, let's get started. Okay, I've got my paper uh, taped down to my board. And I've got paper towels and paint brushes and uh, clean water and I'm ready to just get started. So um, let's see here. What I wanted to tell you too is you can go on uh, on Google and find yourself some pictures of these fish or you can just paint straight out of your head whichever one uh, you prefer to do. But I'm going to take a um, flat angle brush. It's maybe a maybe it, this one is a half inch, it might be a quarter inch. Let's see if I zoom in. Uh, I'm not sure which one it is, half or quarter inch, but anyway, it's the one that I'm comfortable with. I have a whole lot of different sizes of these, and I like the angle on it because it gives me uh, a nice pointy tip to get details with. And I'm just going to get some water uh, on my brush, and uh, over my paint palette here, I'm just going to grab some uh, some of my phthalo blue, or Prussian blue, and I'm going to put uh, a kind of a watery mix. Oh, to start off with, I am going to spray a little bit of water on my paper. with This, this is my uh, fine mist spray bottle. Um, it, it wouldn't hurt, I guess, to use uh, the, the less fine spray, but I just want a little bit of water on there just to kind of get the paper. Um, you, you know, you can see I didn't, I, I don't have the whole paper wet, just a little spot in the middle there. You can see that. Uh, okay, I'm going to just put a, a start of a shape of the fish's body on this and I'm just gonna really loosely put something out there and then I can put some darker color near the top and I think I'll go and get some uh, violet Windsor violet and put near the bottom here and just get started and you see where my paper's wet the paint is already starting to run all around here if I zoom in you can see it like that you can't see the paint palette but maybe it is uh, better for you to see this anyway uh, let's see, I move some of my markers so I can keep this centered in the frame for you there all right, so that's starting to do some stuff, and I'm going to go ahead and start putting some uh, indication of the tail on here, and then I'm going to rinse that purple out of my brush, and I'm going to go into some Scarlet Lake or a red orange or like a cadmium red or something, and just put uh, the beginnings of the uh, face of this fish on here, something like that, and just kind of bring that back into the body there. And then I'm going to use the flat of my brush, just kind of lay it down flat and use that edge there to just kind of um, start flicking some some fins in. These um, these fish have these real flowy fins. That's why I like to paint them. I like to paint them this way because they're they're lacy and flowy and, and fun to paint. So let's see, I've got a lot of red on my brush and I'm going to just start doing some more stuff with this tail and kind of bringing it out here where I want it to be. But I don't have to get too detailed with it. There, that's some good color. I've got a lot of wet color on my brush and put that right on there. Now he needs a top fin to come back, something like that. And then I'm going to get uh, some alizarin crimson, which is a slightly darker uh, red than what I've got on there. And while this is still wet, I'm going to put some of this alizarin right in there and it kind of starts making some uh, some definition and detail happen in, in here that we like because the paper is wet so where I stroke in this uh, darker red color it's going to start doing its own really cool things here. There we go. That's looking good. Okay, now while everything is still wet I'm going to rinse the red out of my brush and pick up some yellow. I've got a, an Aurelian yellow which I think is sort of similar to something called Hansa yellow. Hansa yellow, sorry. Um, I didn't get quite all the red rinsed out of my brush as good as I should have. So that didn't stay bright yellow. But what I'm going to do, wow, that red is just really strong today. Let's see how it's not 100% out of my brush yet. But anyway, I'll dry that off. Kind of lift some of that back out of there and make a lighter spot where I can go back in there and let's lay in some yellow and see if we can get it to stay yellow there like that. So I like there to just be a little bit of a yellow spot right in there. That's good. Now I'm going to lay a little bit of yellow right over the top of this face. Just glaze on an, an, a coat of the yellow because I like what it does to the color. 
which you're not seeing that in my camera. So I'm going to have to lift it back off and do it again. I want to be careful though that I don't get too much, uh, too close to that blue because my um, yellow will turn green and that's not what I'm trying to get on the face here. There, that's a little more like what I wanted. Um, I think I will drop a bit more of the Scarlet Lake right onto it, just a little bit. Because I want to mix up color there. And then I'm going to just darken that phthalo blue and put that fish body right up there where I wanted it to go and draw a little of that out into the tail. And just the least little bit more of the violet right along the bottom there. Oops. Before it has a chance to run where I don't want it to go, I'm going to draw it right down into that fin. I like how that looks. Now, um, this paper towel is saturated, so I need another one. All right, most of the paint is out of my brush, and I'm just going to smooth a little bit here. Don't really need to do a lot because I'm going to put some marker over that. Let's get a little bit of a lighter blue color going in there. Oh yeah, I like that better. That looks good. That's perfect. Okay, now I do want to take a little bit of that blue that I just put in there and put just a little bit back here in the tail because I will like how that looks. And maybe a little bit right up here in this fin. That's pretty too. Okay, one last thing to do before it's time to let it dry. Well, no, actually we have to do the background. Uh, one more thing to do to the fish though is um, he's got this, this fin that hangs down the front here. I, I, uh, I was going to look up what it's called and I forgot to do it, so I can't tell you what it's called. He also has a pectoral fin that we did not put on there, but we'll get, we'll maybe get to that in a minute. But I want to just put this little bit of a swirly thing down here that goes like this. And then there's a little bit of that Windsor Violet in that. Let's see. Um, I, want it, I want it on the front or the back side of it. I'm going to put it on this front side of it here. Something like that. That's good enough. And um, I want to rinse most of that purple out of my brush. There's not very much left in there. And oops, that's too much water. Uh, I just want to put a little bit of purple right here at the end. There, I like how that looks. Okay, now um, let's give him some, some background, I think. We need to put. Um, over in this corner, I'm going to put some something that looks like some kind of stones. That's not dark enough, so I need more, much more pigment in my uh, brush, which means add more paint, not more water. There, I just got something going there. Now to that, I'm going to just add some purple, which is going to um, kind of help to neutralize it a bit, unless I get too much purple and make it look like some stones of some sort. Some underwater stone or, or coral or something going on there. And then I'm going to take some green. Uh, I think I'll get some of my phthalo green and mix it a little bit with with a little uh, um, put a little quintagram gold in there. I think that'll be do the right thing. Yeah, because I want it to be bright, but I don't want it to be an unnatural bright color. So there's a nice pretty green going on for some seaweed or kelp or I don't know what. And I'm just using the edge of my paintbrush to just drop some stuff on there. And it really doesn't matter how, um, what shape you give to it because we're going to spray it with water and that's going to change it up anyways. Now I'm adding some phthalo blue down in the bottom here where it's wet and that'll blend together and give that some nice variation of color. That looks pretty. And let's, um, let's clean out a spot here. I've got just uh, a damp brush here. I'm going to clean out a spot and put something that looks sort of like an anemone right there. It's a spot for it, what I'm doing is I'm cleaning out so I can go back in with my markers later. And with the markers, I'll have more control. And I can draw in a sea anemone right there. And that'll look pretty. 
then uh, we need to float on some water because our fish needs to be floating around in water, not just uh, in nothing. So I'll put a little bit of blue here and then just add water. And I'm going to get it up to the uh, fish where around the fins. I can go right up to that and touch it, and it's okay that some of that color blends together. But I don't want to do that around the face. Around the face, I'm going to get right up close to it, but that face paint is still, you know, the front end of the fish, it's still wet. The whole fish all over is still wet. And wherever I touch with this wet paintbrush, uh, the paint will, will have a tendency to, to blend in. And I don't want the face to run out into the water. I want to keep the face a little more distinct. So paint around that. But then it's okay to paint right over these this fin back here because if this blurs out into the water, that's actually a pretty look that we would like. I'm going to get a little bit of a, that other color that I used on the body of the fish and put some of that in here. Have too much on my brush now. So add a lot more water so I can blend it right in with this other stuff here. Just use kind of a different, uh, you know, some darker spots of blue and some lighter. So we get the appearance that this fish is floating around in this water back here. put water, I put blue on there, and then I get water on my brush, and I just draw that paint right back over here where I want it, and then that gives us the appearance that we're seeing the fins through the water, or the water, you know, right behind, I don't know, they, they blend together good. That looks nice. Okay, now I'm going to touch in a little yellow in some spots in here because I like the way it will look like maybe there's a bit of light or something going through that water. Mm, I like that pretty good. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, what i got to do for this is to let it dry a good bit so that, because um, you can't mark on here with your markers while it's wet, it'll that'll kill your markers. They won't, um, they won't mark on the wet paper and then also it does something to your markers and sometimes uh, your markers won't work anymore because you tried to color on wet paper with them. So at this point we need to stop and let it dry and then we'll come back and put the markers. Oops, I forgot one thing. Um, usually I like to spray the back end of the fish with my uh, fine mist spray bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And it just makes the colors run and it's an additional way to kind of uh, get this fish blended into the water that he's swimming in in a way that looks really pretty. So there, I just sprayed it. Now I did keep the spray off of the face part. I don't want to have that blended in. But you see how I can just sort of start tilting this and those colors start running together and doing cool things. And uh, if you don't like something that it's doing, you can uh, channel it off there with your uh, paintbrush and then mop up the edge so it doesn't run back on to the paper. So I'm just going to take that excess off there that was coming out a little too dark. But also I can tilt the paper and make it run whatever way I want it to run. And if it's not quite running enough, use your paintbrush to just help things along. And kind of, like right here, I'm just going to spread that out a little bit better. Rather than, um, and I should have zoomed back in again. Rather than wipe all that off there, I just spread it out a little. Now, I, this is where I have so much water on here, my paper's really wanting to buckle up a lot. Uh, and it is puffy right here. Watch, I can push that down. You see the paper moving? So that, that's why you really want to, um, there, that one shows up good. Uh, that's why you really want to tape your paper down as good as you can so that you don't have that sort of stuff ruining your, your piece. And I'm just going to loosen that up in there a little bit too. I think that's, that's probably good. I'll leave the top like it is. And just spray a little bit in that bottom. It just gives the, the moisture laying there on the, the paper gives uh, the paint somewhere to run to. The, the pigments kind of jump up and run around in that water where the water is moving. And you can see this water puddle is just slide, slowly moving over that way. And if I don't like it, again, I can just direct it where I want it to go with my paintbrush. Or I can let it just do its thing all on its own and see what cool results I get. 
And while that is wet, I'm going to just touch in a little bit of purple right there because I think that will do something nice. We'll just see what it will do. Give a little bit of darkness there to kind of help anchor that down onto that top of that rock that I created. Put a little shadow in the background. That's, I think I'm going to stop right there before I overdo it. And now, really, I am going to let it dry this time. So, um, oops, there we go. So letting that dry until it is the whole way dry, uh, then I will go back in with marker. So I'll see you back in just a minute. Okay, it's obviously been a while and my painting is dry. It's uh, actually been uh, several hours because it started pouring down rain here and I ended up having to uh, go run a bunch of errands for my husband. And so now it's dark outside and I've got all the lights on in the studio pointed at the table here and I'm hoping that I've got everything uh, adjusted so that we'll be able to see what we're working on really good. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to my other screen. Oops, I've got to press the right button. Uh, then this will hopefully be zoomed in. We probably won't need the paint palette. If we do, I'll switch back to the other view so you can see what I'm putting in there. But I just wanted to show you this. Um, it's all dry now, and I've left it taped down just because I like to leave it uh, taped so that it dries completely flat. Um, and I could take it off there now, but I probably won't uh, until we're done here. I wanted to just show you, this is a couple of ideas of what we're gonna work on. We're gonna um, put pen markings and um, this is some more where I've just marked on here and added a few lines with a uh, black fine point marker. And I left on this one, I left this all undetailed um, with, the, with the marker because I like how this looks. But on this one, I like how it looked to make all of these really neat uh, designs in here of sea sponges or anemones or I don't know what they are. They're just some sort of underwater something or other. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in here. There you yeah, You can see it better there. I did add some detailing on the fish itself, but not a lot. And I put some over in here and I just like how this looks. So I'll probably either put that in a little frame or, um, well, I think I will put that in a frame. I could sometimes, sometimes I turn them into postcards because you can write on the back of them and make it a postcard that you mail off to a friend. But uh, I think I'm going to put this one in a frame. I like it. Um, but anyway, let me show you a close up of this one so you can see that better. You can see where I've got, uh, fine point black marker going on in there just adding more details and I can do as much or as little as I want to add to it. You can see there's a, a bit more in here and I also use some blue uh, markers. I've got all those Tombow markers. I use some of the Tombow markers to put blue lines in there and enhance that a little and in fact I did that on this too. This little area right up in here that I did with the marker and I'm going to show you how to get those types of details in here working on this fish. So now I have markers galore everywhere. I have all different kinds of them. And they are all, the one thing they all have in com common is that they are all uh, brush markers. Uh, and they're all water-based. And this is a, uh, most of mine are Tombow markers that come from a Tombow set. And I've bought several sets and then divided them all back up according to how I like them organized. So I've got all my, all my greens and yellows. Oh, that's... There we go. All, all my greens and yellows here, a lot of pinks and purples here, um, reds and browns. This is a, a different set. It's pastel and over to my left here. Some that I use a whole lot are all my blues and aqua blues and uh, a couple of the darker purple ones. Uh, I also have a set of Artist Loft markers in here also, uh, brush markers with, with the, the brush tip on the end of it there because you can lay that over on its side and almost paint with that. And these combos are dual tipped. They have the brush tip on one end and a fine point marker tip on the other end. So uh, they're really great fun to use. Now I'm also going to tell you that when I get going in this, uh, I can really spend a lot of time working on these things. So I'm most likely going to show you a few details here. Like I got to decide how I want this fish to be. I'm not looking straight down on this fish, so I don't want an eye here and an eye here. I want one kind of on the side. Uh, so I got to make that the side of his face along the lines of what I did with this one. I don't have one that I did from the top to show you right now. But anyway, um, what I was going to tell you is I take a lot of time doing this. I really, um, I look at it and like right now, where is that mouth going to go? And where's that eye going to go? I look at it and I take my time and sometimes I just kind of put something in and I um, let it 
tell me what it what else it needs and let it gel and I, I uh, lose track of how much time I've spent working on this so I'm going to show you a few little details here and how I do those and then I'm going to switch gears uh, well I'm going to do time lapse so that you don't have to watch me work on this for an hour uh, but I do want to be able to show you the end result so let's see this this marker pen I'm going to use to enhance some of this color here I think I'll just lay that on its side and draw that right out into there and then I want to Put a little bit more of that into here and dr drag it right out into that tail area there. Just pump up that color a little bit. And we'll put a little bit right there because that'll be pretty. And then I'm going to put it right in there. So I drew that. And let's see here. Um, I do want to do that eye, but I want to zoom in a little better. Oh, that's a little too zoomed in. How about that? That should work. Okay, so I'm looking at it and I'm trying to figure out where I want the eye on this one. I really like how this one came out, but I'm not seeing if I've got something exactly the same going on there. I guess I do kind of. If I put the eye right about in here, and I can use one of my other... Um, I can, I've got a tool I can use to clean the paint or lift the paint out of there so I can bring some of that white back. But also, I want to figure where's the mouth. And I want to make this one have its mouth kind of right here. I like that look. And then I'm going to just kind of enhance that one right along there and send some lines down into there. That's a good start on the eye. And what I will do, let's see here, I'll try one of my... Um, blending markers. The Tumble kits come with a blending pen. Oops, that one is... I, I use them a lot and they get really... they get worn out quick around here. So I've got to find one that's not too worn out. They're mostly all worn out. Let's see. I wonder, have I tried the back end? I don't know that the back end is going to lift very well. It's not. So what I'm going to do instead of that, instead of using that, is I've got my really small flat angle brush and I've got some clean water. So I'm going to get that brush wet and just lift paint right out on the inside of where I drew that circle. And what, I, what I'm doing here, I'm using the tip of the brush and I'm applying a little water and then rubbing the bristles over it. So instead of depositing paint, putting paint down, I am doing the reverse. I'm lifting that paint up from there. And all I have to do is lift enough of that to lighten that area inside there so that when I use my um, black marker to put the rest of the eye, the pupil or the iris or whatever it is we call it on the fish, when I go to put that back in, I'll have enough lightened area in here that the contrast will look good, it'll show up, and make a really good looking eye. So that's probably enough lifted right there. It looks looks uh, a lot uh, more of a start point eye on the camera than it is in person. But anyway, okay, I'm going to let that dry. I did blot it a little bit, but I'm going to let it dry a bit more um, before I color on it with my marker, just to be sure that the marker uh, shows up on there. Uh, now, I left off when I was painting, I didn't put the pectoral fin. That would be this fin right here that's kind of like a fan shaped fin uh, behind the gills. And I'm going to just figure where that would be on this fish. And I'm looking at what's in the paint there. And so I'm deciding that right about here is going to be the front end of it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a few marks for where the front of that fin will be. And then looking at what I've got in the paint there, I'm going to make this a pretty small fin here. Just something like that. That's good enough. And then I will go ahead and take that same brush I was using on the eye and I'll go ahead and lift a little bit of color out of there to make that fin show up a little better. And I can always go back in and add a little more color on it with either paint or markers once this area has dried and I decide what it needs. And I'm just brushing the brush the bristles over there lightly, kind of like tickling that color back up off of there. You don't want to scrub it really hard because you'll cause your paper to fill. You'll, you'll be like tearing up some of the fibers of the paper, and you don't want to do that because that won't look 
good. It won't be easy to fix. Okay, that is pretty good for that little pectoral fin. Now, I'm going to blot that dry too with a clean spot of my paper towel. And then let me go ahead and put in um, a big dark circle inside here. But I do want to leave a little white on it for a highlight. So there he's got an eye. Let's see if I can zoom in a little and show you there. Look at that. See that eye? So um, I, I just colored a circle in there, but I left a white area inside that circle. Now also when I was uh, cleaning it out, I got some of that off the edge there. So that filled that in. That looks good. I like that for an eye. I like how that looks pretty good. I'm gonna set that marker aside. And let's see what I want to use next on here. Uh, I think I'm going to take some of my green markers, zoom back out just that little bit there, and I'm going to use some of my green markers and put in a little bit more definition in this seaweedy, kelpy, I don't know what it is, stuff over here. I don't want to overdo it though. I really like the loose appearance that it had, so I don't want to mess that up. I just put a little bit in there and then I'm going to do like I did before and use this wet uh, brush to just kind of move that around just a little and soften things. I'm just rubbing my damp paintbrush over those marker marks just to soften it a little. I don't really want to make it go away, but I just don't want it to be quite as, um, try to, quite as stark as it was. So I just soften little bits here and there. That. And then let's see, I've got another really yellow green color that's pretty. Maybe I can put a bit more of that color in in a few places. Just to bring out some of the edges, but I don't want to bring them all out. I really want to keep it loose and flowy. like that and I think I will add just a touch more on this purple because it adds a dimension making it look kind of like like some of this is kind of back in the shadows back there sticking out there because
kind of thing. A few dark green dots. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed painting that pretty little uh, Siamese fighting fish and uh, that you'll give that a try and paint lots of them because they're fun. <laughs> um, anyways, thanks for painting with me today and I'll see you again next time.